Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. For those that haven't met me before or haven't watched any of my videos before, my name is Tash. I am now a fourth year medical student at King's College London and I have just finished my women's health block as part of my fourth year. So I thought I would chat to you all things women's health or obs and gynae and share some tips that I learned which I wish I knew before I started. So we're gonna be talking all things pregnancy, giving birth, vaginas, sexual health, breasts, you name it, we're gonna speak about it. So I did my women's health placement at St. Thomas's Hospital, which is based just across Westminster Bridge, and also in Guy's Hospital, which is at London Bridge. So for anyone that doesn't know, obstetrics is kind of the care for pregnant women. So it includes antenatal care, delivery, postnatal care, and then gynecology or gyne is all things to do with women's health. And then in this block, we also spent time in the breast clinic. We had a sexual health week. So we did a lot in these seven weeks. First of all, I wanted to talk to you about clinical examinations and clinical skills for obs and gynae. So the three main ones which we learnt were how to do a bimanual examination, or you may have heard this being referred to as an internal vaginal examination. The second one is a speculum examination. And then finally, the last one that we learnt is a female catheterization. So when I first heard that I was gonna have to do these three examinations, I felt really awkward I was like oh my word they sound really intense this sounds really scary but it's really really not and I know everybody says that and I know you're gonna be like but it is Tash it just is I think it's really good because what you can do is when a lady goes for some kind of gynecology surgery as long as you have consent prior to this you can perform a bimanual examination when the lady is under general anaesthetic so you don't have to worry about being awkward and you don't have to worry about causing the woman pain and then of course you can insert a female catheter before the procedure as well and then also what we had which i really encourage you to actively seek out if it's not kind of handed to you is these gta sessions which i actually don't know what it stands for but it's basically when you have a patient educator session so you have a lay member of the public who is trained in teaching medical students a specific examinational skill so they taught us and then we had the chance to practice on them which was really useful especially as we weren't really in a high pressure situation they were able to give us feedback Feedback, like whether it was comfortable so yeah those are such valuable sessions which I really highly recommend you go to the next things that I want to cover is how to actually get involved and what you can do as a medical student so first of all I kind of want to talk about my time on the antenatal ward and antenatal clinic and share some tips that I learned from there. So on the antenatal ward, this is a really, really good chance to practice taking an obstetric history. Now I got thrown into the deep end, literally my first day after a whole year away from medicine because I was integrating, I turned up and this nurse was like, go and take the history from this lady and then present it to a doctor. And actually this was so, so valuable because one, it gave me, it was just nice to speak to a patient and I can still remember that patient and I don't think I will ever forget her. And I forgot so many things to ask her, but luckily enough, I actually, I presented to such a nice doctor who was very empathetic and sympathetic and actually was really kind while also pointing out the things that I missed. Antenatal ward, it's gonna be a lot of ward rounds, but definitely chatting to the ladies about their pregnancy so far. Most of them are there because they're either waiting for an induction of their labor or some of them have had complications during their pregnancy such as bleeding during pregnancy or reduced fetal movement so definitely is a good chance to go and chat to them and find out more about those conditions the other side of it is the antenatal clinic which was absolutely fantastic so women 
come in if they have complications of their pregnancy. So for example, they might have gestational diabetes, they might have a baby that is small for its gest gestational age or big. This is a really good chance to practice your clinical skills such as measuring the um, fundal symphysial height using the tape measure. It's a really good chance to examine a pregnant lady's abdomen and start feeling for the head and trying to work out what position the baby is lying in. It's a great chance to get your urine dip signed off. All of the ladies basically need a urine dip. What I would suggest is at the start of the clinic, it's just telling the doctor that you're with that you're very happy to do X, Y, and Z. Um, and then they will get you actively involved. The next side of it is the actual labor. So this could be a vaginal delivery, it could be a planned C-section, it could be an emergency C-section. So I saw about six planned C-sections, which was really nice. What I recommend doing is going to the ward. So usually these ladies will be on the postnatal ward before they've given birth. So go and chat to them first, find out how they're feeling, what's going on, whether you can watch their C-section. Try and scrub in. You probably won't be able to do much, um, but if there's a really nice surgeon, doctor, consultant, whoever, they'll often let you scrub in and you'll be able to do some things you won't be actually delivering the baby but you may be able to feel the uterus um, you may be able to see the placenta um, little things like that what i also recommend is talk talking to the midwives you can see the baby checks that they do as soon as the baby is delivered another thing you can do is go behind the curtain and chat to mum and dad sometimes when the baby has to be taken away to the neonatal intensive care it can be really really scary for the lady so i I had a lovely lovely chat with the lady and I felt felt really sorry for her but hopefully I was able to kind of reassure her as much as possible and just be there and show my support another really good place to go is the MAU so maternal assessment unit so this is basically A&E for pregnant ladies so it's led by midwives and they're absolutely fantastic and what you can ask to do is to actually clerk the patients as they come in take the history from them then you've got the postnatal ward which I personally didn't find that useful in terms of learning but it was a really good chance to see some really really cute babies if mum was okay with it we had the chance to hold the babies and just get used to how little tiny tiny babies feel to hold which was really sweet and just find out how mum was recovering afterwards then kind of over to the gynae side of things so basically again this is split up into outpatients and inpatients most of my time was spent in outpatients so i was on the rapid access clinic which is for which is kind of the two week wait referral and then there's just the general outpatient gynae clinic which is mainly for things like heavy periods and painful periods so on the rapid access clinic i got to see a lot of patients being reassured that their symptoms and signs weren't suggestive of cancer and i also got to see a doctor break the bad news that um unfortunately and really sadly a lady did have um a type of gynae cancer i would say the rapid access clinic is going to be more observing due to the serious nature of it whereas the general outpatient clinic again is a really good chance to start taking the initial history from the patient find out what's been going on and a really really good chance to start really practicing and refining your gynecological history taking skills then you've kind of got the gyne inpatient ward which I didn't find to be too helpful. And then we had the gynecology day surgery. So this is where patients come in, literally they arrive in the morning about a couple of hours before their surgery. They get changed, they get consented, go into theatre. This is where you can practice those examinations I was talking about. And then they're in theatre for between sort of one to two hours and then they have a chance to recover and then they're home on the same day. What I would suggest is actively finding the patients before the surgery to consent them. And the thing that I found the most difficult was actually explaining to the patient the examination or the procedure, uh, explaining why I was going to be doing it. So for example, the bimanual examination that I was gonna be doing under when they were under GA was 
pretty much all for my benefit, which was important to say, but important to say that obviously I'm a medical student, I need to learn, but at the end of the day, it's completely their choice. They're under no pressure to allow it. And I'd say about 50% of the patients said yes, 50% said no, and both was absolutely fine. And then we come to sexual health, which I feel thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed i'm a bit biased because i love all the health and equality things i sat in on a like general sexual health clinic but i want to spend the time talking about the hiv clinic it was so so insightful and it really really got me thinking that hiv is no different to any other chronic disease such as diabetes such as copd such as hypertension and then finally i was in the breast clinic which was a great chance to practice breast examinations mainly it was ladies there were men as well though um, and it was such a good, it was a really good opportunity and most of the patients were absolutely fine with me examining them with obviously the doctor there. So finally, I just wanted to cover my main mistake and my top, top tips for you guys going into your obs and gynae placement. So the first thing is make sure you practice what you're going to say when you're gaining consent and telling a patient about these intimate examinations because i found that i was really stumbling over my words i felt a bit awkward i felt a bit shy but if i had just practiced or had a rough idea of what i was going to say how to explain the examinations then it would have got a lot lot better the second thing is to refresh your brain about the anatomy of a woman's reproductive system before you go into your c-sections because they will grill you and i really hadn't looked over anatomy since probably first year the third thing is to start thinking about things in terms of how they present rather than starting with the condition if that makes sense so for example i might say what are the differential diagnoses for bleeding during pregnancy rather than saying let's learn all about placenta previa for example my fourth tip which i don't know if it's specific to obs and gynae but just for placements in general if you find that sometimes you're not learning lots or you're scheduled to be in surgery all day and all six procedures are exactly the same such as six hysterectomies then maybe stay for two and maybe leave because i don't know how much you're going to get out of seeing six of the same surgeries because you're at med school you're not learning how to do the actual surgical procedure and then finally don't neglect the basics don't neglect doing a urine dip. Don't neglect, you know, reading the results of the urine dipstick. Don't neglect your communication skills. This is a really good chance to really refine those communication skills. The patients are so, so lovely. Then I just wanted to share some of the useful ways that I studied for my obs and gynae block. So I really, really love zero to finals. The obs and gynae section is absolutely fantastic. Again, I hit past med and quiz med hard with their question bank on obs and gynae. I also really, really like the resource called, called Teach Me Obs and Gynae. It's quite detailed, but it's really, really good. So finally, guys, if you've already done your Obs and Gynae placement, please do leave your tips and tricks in the comments. And if you're yet to start your Obs and Gynae placement, let me know what you're looking forward to. But overall, it was a fantastic mix of medicine and surgery. So I can really, really see why so many people love it as a special. Specialty.